Hi guys, I'm AVM and welcome back to the channel and to my forever house, I guess you'd call it. You know, the house that you spend most of your years in, the one that your, your children will grow up in, go to school in, maybe go to university from, then come back from uni and spend another 20 years here before they finally move out, you know, that house. If we're ever going to put any investment into a property, basically, this is the one to do it in. And we have. As you can probably tell from these much larger than I expected solar panels next to me, We've got solar panels, but not just solar panels. I've used what I call advanced man maths. Any time I've looked into these, the payback was always several years longer than I wanted to be, it to be. Now I've spent more money on something else to go with the panels, the payback period is several years less. So yeah, that's what they're called advanced man maths. Basically, I've got these and I've got this. This is the Give Energy home battery system and I call it a system because it's not just a, a battery storage thing it actually does way more than that and out of every battery system on the market and believe me I've researched them to death over the last few months uh, this for me is the best one on the market in terms of value what it does I'll tell you more later on in the video I'm not saying it's the best in every little segment but overall this for me is the one that I would go for and I should point out this is not a sponsored video you know, I've got an invoice for this, this is mine, I've, I've paid for these. Um, so yeah, this is just the one I've gone for because I think it's the best on the market. Just like I went for the Omi Charger because that is the best one that was on the market at the time. Now, this isn't going to be a detailed look at this. I'm going to leave that for the new year when I can show you the app and the graphs and much more detailed stuff about how it works. This is just an overview of the solar system and the home battery system that we've just had installed and I'll just tell you basically why this for me, in terms of highlights, bullet points, if you will, is the one to go for. Oh, and I include the Tesla Powerwall, one, two, three, or whatever they're on at the moment in that as well. Right, before I uh, show you this Give Energy battery, let me show you what I've done with these solar panels. These are per light 320 watt panels, and the only reason I went for these over everything else is because they were in stock and they were at a very good price. So that's basically it. There's no technical reason I chose these over anything else. It was just uh, a good opportunity, shall we say. So yes, the reason, by the way, I've got four of these in my garage when the other 14 are on the roof is due to a, a little um, a little boo-boo of mine. I gambled and failed, effectively. I give the measurements for my roof space to the company and they said, we can definitely fit 14 on, maybe 18, but until we come up, we can't guarantee that. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to gamble that we can fit them all on. And yeah, we couldn't. So uh, now I have four extra panels. I do have an idea on what to do with them. And for that, I need your help. Because this wall here, the one that I'm stood against and I'm about to show you from the other side, is south facing. So that gives me an idea. Now my idea is that this wall here, which is south facing, I could put the solar panels on the side of them. I'm not sure if that's the best idea, but as I already own them, there's no cost there. That kind of makes sense to me. You could get L brackets, which kind of make it stand like that. So I don't know, what do you think? Let me know in the comments whether you think that's a good idea. Should I use the side of the wall to increase my solar array? Now, as this is a south facing wall, I've effectively got a, an east-west array. So that basically means that I'm gonna have a much shorter curve. I'm not gonna have a peak like you would with a, a south facing array. This is gonna be a much lower curve. So effectively, when the sun starts over here, I'm gonna get some generation in the morning. And then as it moves around to here, east to west, of course, I'm gonna get more generation on this side. So even though I've got a, like it's four and a half kilowatt array, pretty much, I'm never ever gonna achieve that because I've effectively got two separate arrays, one on each side of the house, but I can't change the orientation of the house, so I'm stuck with that, really. I can't, I can't do anything about it. Uh, but in terms of putting the solar panels on the side, what do you think? Is, is that gonna work? Is the windows gonna get in the way? They are quite big, so I'm not sure that's, that's, that's viable, unfortunately. Any other ideas? Please let me know, because I would like a bigger array. Oh, lordy, it's cold out there. <laughs> right, let me show you this thing here, which is the inverter. And this down here is the battery. Again, this is just the highlights. I'll go into it far more in depth and show you, hopefully, what the payback period should be like by then. 
sometime in the new year when I've got more, more data basically to show you. But okay, in terms of what it can do and why I would recommend it, ooh, where to start? Well, I'll start off with the thing that people criticize the most. Well, some people criticize in terms of electric vehicles. And that is of course the precious material or mineral, should I say, cobalt. This, um, from day one, no cobalt at all, nothing. Something that Tesla are making a big deal of for future batteries for them. This, this hasn't, have it, hasn't had it for years. So yeah, I don't know if that's gonna be a big thing for you, but ultimately no cobalt to worry about in this one. Uh, it's also very safe. This is in an integral garage. My house is above where I'm stood right now. And I could take a fire axe to this thing, pierce it as much as I like. It ain't gonna set on fire. So there's a little bit uh, of safety there, which you might not get with other types of batteries. But let me get to uh, the, the, the more interesting ones in terms of money saving ones, because that's what we're here for ultimately, isn't it? As a Yorkshireman, I'm all for money saving. As I said before, this is the inverter, but it's not just the inverter for the battery. It's also the inverter for my solar panels. So I don't need a separate inverter. And that makes it A, more efficient and B, cheaper, because I don't need another box on the wall that costs me money. This does it built in effectively. It's, a, it's the hybrid model of the uh, battery system. But not only that, this isn't out yet, but it's on its way. It will do solar divert out the box. So you don't need to spend four, five, six hundred pounds on something to divert excess solar when the battery's full to an immersion heater, for example. It will do it in here. It's magic. Not only that, but it will do divert solar, excess solar if I wish, or if I had a big enough array anyway, if that's full and the water's up to temperature, to my car or to my car instead of the immersion here. Basically, it will do solar divert, something a lot of people with panels get and spend a lot of money on, but this will do it out of the box. So if you were planning on getting a solar array with solar divert A or B, put it towards this, put it towards the battery system that does it by itself, or should I say, will do it soon. It's still being tested, I believe it's on its way. And that leads me to another thing, which I really like about this entire system. How many Tesla owners do you know? I'm one as well, and I've seen the benefit of this, who say, well, my car gets better with age. I come out one day, it's done an update, and now it does something it didn't before. All of them. I don't have to buy the new car to get the new features. That is a really cool thing. This can also update over the air. So if they do release something, something new, then uh, I will get the benefit of that. In fact, I've just found out about an update, which I'll be getting very shortly, hopefully. Uh, and that means that it will do something now that it didn't do before, which was annoying me a little bit. Well, let's imagine I just wanted to give the car a little bit of a charge, you know, top up in between coming home and my wife going to work. It would drain this. So instead of having a full battery ready for the peak period where it's expensive, it was nearly flat because the car would flatten that. Well, now, or well, very soon anyway, it won't do that. This will ignore my car's charging. So it will only power the house rather than the car. And again, that, that's brilliant. It does something that I wanted it to do and now it will do soon. So yeah, it's like a Tesla in the fact it updates itself. I mean, it gets even better than that. With probably, I don't know, a few hundred quid extra, you know, get an electrician in, I can make it so yes, it will power the house in the event of a power cut. I find that kind of unnecessary at the moment, although we do get occasional power cuts. I, I might do that in the future. But ultimately, I don't need to spend, I don't know, why is, it, why is a Tesla gateway these days? 1,500 quid or something? I just spent uh, two or 300 quid and I've got that same functionality. But now we get to the bit which for me made me really sit up and take notice when I came to getting this over other things. I'm gonna to have to explain it assuming you don't know or you've never heard of this before, but effectively I'm on an energy tariff from Octopus Energy called Agile. And it's, think of it like a economy seven in terms of it's cheaper at night than it is during the day, only this changes every half an hour. So it can do this literally every half hour based on the wholesale price of electricity. So you'll get you know cheap, minor fluctuations at night, and then in the morning, the price will come up a bit. It usually dips down a bit in the uh, afternoon. And then when we get to peak time, four till 7 p.m., it, it goes up significantly. And it, it can even max out at, uh, I think it's 35 pence per kilo hour, which is very expensive. And then after peak, it drops that down to kind of like ordinary before we get to the night time again, and you're at the cheap uh, tariff. This, like the Omi car charger I've got, knows those prices up to 24 hours in advance and will charge at the cheapest times by itself. Don't even need to tinker with it or 
program it each night. So effectively, let's imagine it's, I don't know, it's 2 a.m. and it's gonna be two pence per kilowatt hour. And then it's gonna be three pence, and then it's gonna be two and a half pence, and then four pence, and then three P. I basically tell it to pick the cheapest, let's say six half hour periods in this time window, and it will pick the cheapest ones automatically. So all the electricity that doesn't come from my solar panels that I have to get from the grid is always at the cheapest time. I have almost zero peak usage since I installed this. And that's without any solar as well, because at the moment we're in the middle of winter and I live in Yorkshire, we don't have sun. In fact, we only have two seasons in Yorkshire, winter and August. I'll be able to fill this battery up and then divert any excess solar in theory, if it's, if it's installed by then anyway, to my immersion heater if I get one or the car. So not only is it enabling me to use all my solar generation day and night, but the grid reliance part of it, you know, the, the, I, I will have to use the grid clearly, I ain't got that big an array. It's all from the cheapest times. You can of course manually program it and tell it when to charge up and when to discharge. And although I don't have this in place yet for certificates reasons, but again, in the near future, I will have an export tariff. So I will get paid for anything I export to the grid. And it will do this as well. This is, this is why I like it so much as a system. It's integration. That's why I like technology so much. It just works so well with each other. And this is working together with my energy provider, my supplier, Octopus, which is crackers when you think about it. Something in my house is talking to my energy provider. So once I get this export tariff in place, let's imagine that I can import electricity at, I don't know, something really low, like three pence per kilowatt hour during the, uh, the cheap nighttime period or early morning. And then let's imagine something changes during the day. So I could sell electricity on the export tariff at 10p. I could effectively charge this up at night, export it during the day for everything the house isn't using and make money. I mean, I haven't got this in place yet, but that sounds uh, quite cool. It will do it all itself. So if it thinks, well, you're gonna need all this for your house, it'll just leave it. If the export price, cause there's an export agile tariff as well that goes up and down in the same manner. If that is particularly high, it'll just pump it out from the battery to the grid and I will again, I, I will make some money from it. So effectively, we've got a solar array connected to inverter, which can solar divert to, let's say, an immersion heater or a car with excess solar once the battery is full. It talks to my energy provider to get electricity from the grid when needed at the cheapest times. And once it's in play, it will export it to the grid when I will get paid the most for that. It's just brilliant. It's, it's well, it, it's, it's technology at its best. Integration, communication between this, this, and this. It's the ultimate smart home gadget. But you know what? It gets better than that. There is one thing I haven't mentioned, which I suppose I could have led with, really. One reason to get this over any other battery. It's the killer blow, if you like, to all its competitors. The CEO, the head honcho, the boss, if you will, of Give Energy is a Yorkshireman. What more do I have to say? Right, well, that's pretty much it, really. A uh, very brief overview of the system. I will, of course, do future videos on this in terms of you know how much it's generated, what's this like in terms of export and you know, import, does it make sense from a financial point of view, that sort of stuff. In fact, I might as well mention the finances. You could get a four kilowatt array, assuming no complicated installations, of course. This system I've got, the 8.2 hybrid inverter with an array, I think the most you'll pay for this if you just shop around a little bit is 10 grand. I reckon eight to 10 grand is the window you should be looking at for the array and the battery, both of them. When you look at competition, I'm going to use the Powerwall um, home battery because most people are familiar with it. I'm not, I'm not having to go at Tesla here before any fanboy jumps down my throat. Uh, if you look at the Powerwall cost, it's probably going to be close to the panel and battery cost of this. And as I said earlier, I think, this has got a better battery warranty than the Powerwall. So there's not even a concern there. So yeah, there we go. Right, uh, look forward to the videos in the future. I know I am because I'm obsessive now on energy graphs and consumption and I'm going around the house plugging things in finding out how much it's using it's become an obsession now so I should warn you if you do get anything like this it will be all you think about for quite some time 
Um, but yeah, in concert with an electric vehicle, this is just, it's just beautiful. So, right, I think I'm done now. Um, thanks for watching, as usual. Please do subscribe, and then if I do, or when I do, more videos on updates for these things, you won't miss them. So, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.